folks, I've seen it all. And I've seen some strange things in my day, but nothing like this one. It appears that a group of Muslim voters have decided to endorse Donald Trump in Michigan. If this could not be even more of a blow towards the Kamala Harris campaign, I don't know what could be. But the fact that it happened on stage at a Trump rally in Michigan is very telling. And I have a couple of things to say about this. I don't understand why this is happening. I can guess, but I just don't get it. But it happened. And here we are. Let's dive in. I'm going to ask all of, if I could, all of my friends to come up from the Arab and Muslim part of Michigan. And I'd like to to give them a big hand because they're going to vote for us and help us win. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Michiganders. As the president said, we just had a, a positive meeting with President Trump. We as Muslims stand with President Trump because he promises peace. He promises peace, not war. So let's just go ahead and pause there for just a second. Uh, so this is not obviously the entire uh, Muslim voting community. Um, but this particular group here, I'm going to get into a little bit more details in the article um, that is supporting Donald Trump. Just FYI, like this isn't all of the Muslim voting community. There are some that are supporting uh, Jill Stein, some supporting Cornell West, uh, and some, there are a few also from uncommitted that are supporting Kamala. You know, some of those leaders have said that but the reality is when it comes to the Arab American vote, Donald Trump is ahead of Kamala Harris with that vote. Now, Arab American doesn't necessarily mean they are Muslim. You can be Arab American and you can be Christian or, you know, non-religious at all. So just keep that in mind. The Muslim voters in particular, though, Kamala Harris is struggling there. That goes back to that care poll uh, that we continue to see over and over again. There is a significant amount of Muslim voters that are supporting Jill Stein. So I don't want you to see this and assume, oh, no, they all changed their mind and decide to support Trump. No, there's just different you know, fractions of that community that are going different ways. We are supporting Donald Trump because he promised to end war in the Middle East and Ukraine. I don't understand this uh, because I have heard Donald Trump repeatedly say that he is, you know, just wants them to go in there and finish it all. Uh, So there's that. I also don't understand it. Think about some of the comments that Donald Trump has made about Palestinian people. There's that. And then there was also the Muslim ban. So I don't like, I don't get this at all. There's one piece of tidbit that I I've been told is that apparently, um, Donald Trump's daughter, Tiffany Trump, it appears, I guess like her father-in-law has somehow made inroads into Muslim voting communities in Michigan and has convinced them that Trump would be better for them. Now, I believe he's Lebanese American. I don't understand how this is happening, but apparently some are deciding to go in that direction. So it just, again, when you think about, and I'm talking about recently, the rhetoric that Donald Trump has said, like, oh, saying Kamala, she's like a Palestinian, which was BS, uh, obviously. But the rhetoric that he said about them. And then also don't forget the pro Palestinian protesters, the rhetoric he had about them. So I'm like, why would you, why, why would you endorse Donald Trump? I don't know guys. The bloodshed has to stop all over the world. And I think this man can make that happen. I personally believe 
that God saved his life twice for a reason. Oh boy. I believe personally that God has saved his life for a reason which is to save the lives of others. Oh boy. We support Donald J. Trump for his commitment to promoting family values and protected our children well-being, especially when it comes to curriculums and schools. I guess I just like, what the hell? And you guys let me know what the hell did Trump say to them? Like what? I, I don't granted the genocide is happening under the Biden Harris administration. Totally get that. You shouldn't support, they shouldn't support Kamala at all. But I also don't understand what makes them think that Trump would, wh why? I, I just, I'm lost. I'm really lost. Cup of joy said curriculums in schools. I don't, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Jesus. We as Muslims support this man because we believe that he will be a president for all Americans embracing every race, color, and religion. We are with President Trump because we want a strong border. And we agree with President Trump that anyone who wants to come to this country is welcome, but he has to do that through legal pathway. There it is. Ding, 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 ding. I believe that's part of the reason why the border issue, immigration. And I've said this before, you know, for whatever reason, there seems to be this assumption that if someone immigrated to this country, that they would be, they would definitely be understanding of those who um, have come here and they're asking for asylum, those who cross the border illegally. That's not necessarily the case. And I, I've had this conversation before with friends of mine that did immigrate to this country. And they'll tell you, most of them will say they don't like what's happening at the border. And they said they don't feel like it's fair because they did everything the right way. And the migrant community that's coming in doesn't have to do that. And they're getting housing and they're getting debit cards and all those types of things. So it almost kind of seems like in this particular endorsement, notice how he brought up the border, the issue of immigration. So that is something that I guess that particular group on the stage feels very strongly about. Now, one of them is a mayor uh, of Dearborn Heights. I'll get to that article in just a second. And you'll see, you know, again, it, it make it says something if a mayor you know, comes forward and endorses as well. We are with President Trump because we want a strong economy. Don't you want that? We are with President Trump to make America great again through peace and justice for all. <laughs> Lastly, Michiganders, I have two predictions for you for the next six months. Are you ready? Number one, the Detroit Lions will win the Super Bowl. <laughs> you can keep that one. <laughs> you can keep that one, hon. I don't think the Detroit Lions are winning the Super Bowl. I've been looking, I've been watching, I'm looking, but I don't think that's going to happen. You can continue with that. Ready for the second prediction? I can't hear you. Are you ready? The second, predict the second prediction is Donald J. Trump will be the 47th president of the United States of America. Now that actually could happen. Okay. All right. God bless you all and God bless America. Wow. 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 I just keep thinking about how the hell Kamala Harris blew this. 
It's driving me crazy because the number of times that Arab American voters were asking for her to sit down and meet with them, you know, recently, the number of times they were like, we want a ceasefire, we want an arms embargo. How the hell did Kamala Harris let this sneak by? You know what? Donald Trump is out here playing chess. And if you're not good at playing chess, you're going to lose. Because think about it. He did something that I think Democrats did not expect him to do. He went and he sat down with Arab Americans in Michigan. And Kamala Harris has continued to say that, well, be quiet or you're going to get Trump. Remember that? I'm speaking. Sit down or you're going to get Trump. Right? Remember that? So remember her response and look at what he did. It's like we're watching chess like in real time. Like how could you have let this sneak by in Michigan? The number of times that Kamala has been in Michigan. Hell, Jill Stein, I think Jill has been in Michigan more than Kamala has. I'm not even trying to front. I think Jill has been in Michigan since day one after October 7th. She's been there more than Kamala Harris has. They pretty much, they know her. Whew. See how they shaking hands? Everybody see what's happening here? So why is this happening? You know, um, Amen from MSNBC, he talked about this too. He wrote an article about it. And he was just like, like, people need to see this because this is not a joke. Why is Trump gaining ground with Arab American voters? Again, this is from Iman. Check this out, fam. With election day just days away, Donald Trump is making surprising gains with an unexpected group of voters, Arab and Muslim Americans. According to a new poll, the Arab News Research and Study Unit, the former president is now edging out Vice President Kamala Harris among Arab American voters, 43% to 41%. Like, I just... I don't understand how Kamala's campaign really could have blown this. Muslim voters were more willing to talk to Kamala Harris first, not Donald Trump. Hey, you brush these people off. There could be a realignment happening with Muslim voters. Some of these voters may never go back to the Democratic Party. I'm just keeping it real, real talk. Some of them may never go back. And it just, it, how do you make this make sense, fam? How do you, you lose another demographic? How do you do this? Ay, ay, ay. It goes on to say here, while that number is within the polls margin era of era, it comes as Trump scored an endorsement from Bill Bozzi, the mayor of Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Bozzi represents a city with a large Arab population and joined Trump at a rally in the battleground state this weekend. You might be asking yourself, how did we get to the point where some Arab American and Muslim voters are backing this man? All this in stark contrast to overwhelming support to Biden enjoyed from the same community back in 2020 is also pretty surprising when consider Trump's record with Muslim and Americans, Arab Americans. During his first term, Trump banned immigration from several Muslim majority countries. He even made comments about Islam hating America. He repeatedly attacked Arab and Muslim lawmakers like Representative Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib. And throughout his first campaign, Trump frequently repeated the false claim that he saw thousands of New Jersey Muslims celebrating the 9-11 attacks. If Trump is successful in this election and finds himself back in the White House in January, we have a pretty clear picture of how he'd handle the war in the Middle East, which he might inherit during his first. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he would inherit it, definitely. During his first administration, he defied global calls and moved the U.S. embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. Trump also recognized Israel's annexation of the Golan Heights. More recently, he said Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was doing a good job and claimed that Biden was holding him back. Trump also promised to deport pro-Palestinian protesters, all while using Palestinian as a slur. 
How does this happen? So listen to this. This is coming from Shadi Hamid, a columnist for the Washington Post. In my conversations with Arab and Muslims across the country, the mood has become dark and uh, despairing. They see how the Democratic Party has ignored the preferences of its own members, 77 percent of whom believe the U.S. should not send weapons to Israel. Leading Democrats acknowledge the devastation inflicted on Gaza, but in the same breath appear unwilling to do anything about it. Although Kamala Harris has been more effective at expressing empathy for Palestinian civilians, she also signaled she will not break with the Biden administration policy on Israel and Gaza. So it just, yeah. And again, don't think that's everybody, every Muslim voter and Arab American voter in Michigan. It's not, uh, but that group there from Dearborn Heights, uh, they have endorsed Trump. It's clear to many Arab American and Muslim voters that the former president's newfound love for the community isn't genuine. So, you know, it's not like everybody is buying this. Um, but holy smokes, holy hell, like how do you ruin how do you mess that up? How do you mess that up? And then and also I just guys, I told you at, at the beginning of the year, 2024 was gonna be wild, but this was not what I envisioned. This is insane. And just everything from from everything from from Biden, like not having a real primary with the people running against them, Biden dropping out of the race, Kamala getting into the race, having no policy for weeks, um, not being able to shift on Israel, pump, uh, Trump, I said pump, <laughs> Trump, um, you know, slowly climbing up in the polls and then kind of just taking off and Muslim um, voters endorsing Donald Trump. This is a crazy year. Crazy.